Welcome to 8 Minute Crimes. We upload multiple videos each week, and we are working on obtaining exclusive interrogations in the very near future. It's free to like, it's free to subscribe, and it really does help the channel immensely. So if you like consistent content, and you like what we're doing here, let us know. We would love to have you along for the journey. Information about this case is in the description box below. Enough rambling, let's get into it. Staff's daughter got it. Oh no! So my chief okay. of staff, Tim, that you talked to, is at home, and, and then uh, uh, Dave, the director, got it confirmed yesterday. Oh so my! Home. So like today, we had our DCI annual meeting actually over virtual mm -hmm. instead of bringing Man. everybody in. So. Yeah, we had to cancel ours too. It was mm -hmm. kind of a crazy deal, but right. Not much you can do. I mean, it's too. It's just too sketchy there. Too risky, really. Yeah. So how's Dave doing? Is he, is he feeling the symptoms of it? Or? Yes. <laughs> he he, uh, well, they tested him, and then he didn't, uh, they had to cancel the test or something, and then they had to test him again, and then he, you know, he said he had like every symptom that they could have. Uh, or, or 40 out of the 43 here. <laughs> Yuck. Because you're, you're hearing about half the people don't have any symptoms. Well, and then I don't know when you guys in relation to they closed the schools here. Oh, did they? Yeah. So okay. The high school, mm -hmm. you know, here and Fort Pierre Bowl. Okay. Really? Yeah, we're still in like a hybrid system where like A through K go Monday and Wednesday and Friday, and then the next week go Tuesday, Thursday, and the other half go. Uh -huh. So yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of waiting for it though because our numbers in at least Burley and Morton are, you know, we're I think today we had 85 in Burley and I think yeah. 45 in Morton. And, you know, Burley, Morton, it's got Mandan and Bismarck. It's kind of like Fort Pier and Pier. Okay. And the river is the only thing that separates the two. I guess I'm not as good with North Dakota geography. So we're Burley. Where is Burley and Morton then? Um, Burley is Bismarck, so that's kind of that central. And then you have the Missouri River that comes up. Okay. And so on the east side of the Missouri is Burley on the west side is Morton. Okay. And Got so it. if you don't know the area, you wouldn't yeah. know if you're in Burley, Morton, Bismarck, or Mandan. Right. It right. all just is one. Well, it's together. It blends well, together. I learned a little bit. I'm in the Army Reserves. I think okay. I may have told you last time, but I'm. Mm -hmm. My mission is actually to build a unit at Air Bismarck. Okay. And they got a reserve center on the right by the airport. Mm -hmm. I went up, did site visits, talked to people, and then COVID hit, and everything's been on hold. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's yeah, been, we've been doing virtual since. I think it's, my unit's out of uh, Fort McCoy, Wisconsin. I think. Okay. I just don't want people crossing state lines. Such, right. You know. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Well. Um, what we want to do is we want to go over everything again with you. You know, we've as we've gathered more information. Yep. You know, when we spoke with you, that was early. early. Yeah, you were the, really about the first person we spoke <laughs> yeah. with. Um, so you know, we've just gathered some more information since then. Um, so we want to kind of figure all that out. And um, again, no criminal charges have been filed against you. You're free to go at any time you want to. If you want to stop talking, you're free to leave. Um, you can just get up and walk out. If you don't want to answer any of our questions, you just let us know that. Um, this is a completely voluntary interview. So, all right. You've been real public. cooperative. I, I've tried with, uh, to do everything and think of everything I can think of to, okay. uh, you know, and I thought of a couple things, I guess. You okay. Know, okay. So as we go through it. Here. Okay. Sure. All sure. right. So we're just going to kind of recap some of okay. what happened leading up to it. Okay. Um, so on the 12th, you went to the... Um, Lincoln Day Dinner, it, Spink County Lincoln Day Dinner in Redfield, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, that day, or like on the 11th leading up to the 12th minute, um, how, what kind of sleep did you get? Do you remember? I actually got a lot of sleep. Okay. Because you know, uh, some media reports where I went from Pier to Rapid, that actually was not my schedule. I was actually coming from Louisiana. Uh, we'd been down there for an event with the Attorney General of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I flew into Rapid okay. City and went to an event there, they, a Lincoln Day okay. dinner in Pennington County. That's the Rapid City's town, the county. To sure. Familiarize you. And what day was that that you flew into Rapid? Eleventh. Okay. So the night before Friday, and I 
went to the vent and I got home about 1, 1 15 in the morning. But I slept in till 9 30, 10 30 in the morning. I had an event uh, that I'd been invited to in Sisseton, South Dakota, mm -hmm. and I just told them, you know, I, I can't make it. I, you know, it's too mm -hmm. much to right. do that and go all the way to Sisseton, which is in our northeast corner. I'm familiar with South Dakota geography, so I'm oversimplifying maybe, mm -hmm. but it's in the northeast corner. That would have taken four hours from Pierre at least. You know, and the event was at noon, so that means that I had to leave at 7 30, 8 o'clock, and I just couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So I, my day was 9 30, 10 30. I remember I got up, I slept in, mm -hmm. and then I was around my office and the house until about three o'clock when I left to go to okay. Redfield. So I think I had very adequate sleep. I didn't do anything vigorous. You know, I didn't uh, bale hay as I used to do as a kid, mm -hmm. you know, or something or right. strenuous. So, okay. Uh, how much sleep do you normally get on average in a day? On a normal day, you know, seven, eight hours, I mean, okay. six, seven, eight hours, you know, depending on the day, you know. But what time do you normally get up in the morning then? Seven-ish. You know, uh, I'm usually at the office by eight-ish. You know, um, you know, it depends on my day and schedule. Obviously, my schedule changes dramatically. Mm -hmm. You know, and the maps out and such, and depending on where you got to go. But mm -hmm. I would say that okay is a, a normal day. And then I, I leave. You know, I try to stay till five-ish. You know, <laughs> at least. And then obviously, depending on what work we've got and such. You know, and obviously things are a little different now with COVID, mm -hmm. you know, we're not always in the office every day, uh, a standard eight hour day, because I don't want myself and my chief deputy and my, my chief of staff, as I mentioned, all to be down at the same time. Right. You know, we somebody's got to run the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so we've staggered, you know, we've got staggered schedules mm -hmm. a little bit. Because who's your chief deputy? Chief deputy, his name is Charlie McGuigan. And I can spell all that if you need me to. Yeah, but you M, need. Yep, Charlie's traditional. And then McGuigan, M C, M little C, G U I G A N. Okay. And Charlie has been the chief deputy for myself and Marty Jackley, my predecessor, and actually the end of Larry Long, his predecessor. So okay. he's been chief deputy 10, 12 years, okay. and he's been in the office about 25 years. Oh, okay. So all he right. knows how the office and state government works. I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So then I can get you his contact if oh, you ever want to talk to him yeah, or anything. Okay. I mean. Yeah. Um, so then that day you went to the Lincoln Day dinner for in Redfield. Um, again, you had said that he didn't have anything to drink that night. I absolutely had zero alcohol to drink. I had a Coca-Cola. I had a steak. I don't know what kind of steak, but I had steak, and I had a baked potato. I remember. Okay. That's the three things mm -hmm. I remember eating, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why I tried to give you the waitress's na yep. name, and then I got the list of the people that were there and mm -hmm. such, and, and uh, okay. try to verify that. But mm -hmm. And then what time did you leave the dinner? 9, 9.15. 9, 9.15. Nine, nine P.M., obviously. Yep. And um, again, what roads did you take to come back? I didn't look them up since you were here, but I can describe it yet. Uh -huh. And I, I left out of Redfield going west until you get to what I call the Miller Corner. There's a T intersection okay. that if you kept going straight, you'd go towards Falkton is the town. And uh, if you go, you come to this corner and you go south and you're going to go south to Miller. South Dakota, okay, which is in Hand County, and then from Miller, that's 14, which is all the way here to here, okay, and beyond. But for these purposes, it's from Miller to here. So I made a made an S basically, or a once you left the the event, did you stop anywhere else along the way? Um, no, I got that. I believe so. No, I. No. Okay. Um, do you remember what you were listening? Were you listening to the radio, or what were you? So when I left Redfield, you, you kind of had to snake through town because where this restaurant is. Okay. And then when I got out of town, I remember 
on that first leg, the Miller or the, the Redfield to the corner, I'd called my father. Mm -hmm. So I did not have I had I have Cirrus radio. Okay. So I turned down the volume, but I still had it on because the Lakers were playing. Okay. I remember the Lakers were playing Houston, and I you can watch the score uh, when that hap you know when it's on. Um, and I talked to my father, and I turned the corner, the Miller corner. I turned and talked to him, and then there's a dead zone there, and it dropped. And then I, when you got closer to Miller somewhere, I called him back, and all it was was a, I didn't hang up on you call. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it dropped. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you talked to him too about the Miller corner. Is that about? Well, I, I mean. Left piece right. of paper, you know, or something. Uh -huh. like, I can just show you the paper. I went to the corner. I turned the corner, uh -huh. and I'm, I'm. It dropped somewhere there. Okay. Dead spot. And then, as I got close to Miller, I tried again, and that's when I got him back. That, and I said, you know, I didn't hang up on you, Dad. I, I, it, it, it uh, dropped mm -hmm. for some reason. Right. And like I said, that was not a long call. I mean, we, we kind of talked about what we were going to talk about, and then. Uh, that was it. Right. So that second call was just basically to end the end the end first the first call, call. Really? Yeah. Right. I mean, I just, mm -hmm. I just gotcha. You, you don't be rude to people. You just, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. no. you know, call you back that yeah. I didn't hang up on you. Right. Okay. All right. So then, after you got off the phone with your dad the second time, I didn't call anybody. Okay. Until after the crash. Well, I mean, until the nine one one call. Mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. I mean, so when you were driving, were you listening back to the game or? No, nope, the game got over. Okay. I remember. I remember the game got over, and then you know the twins also got over. Okay. Uh, you know, and I, I, I remember shutting off the radio, at some point, but I think that's closer to Highmore. Uh, Okay. Did you listen to the end of the games, or were they already done when you got uh, somewhere? The twin, I don't know where the twins, the last out. I mean, okay. I remember hearing the last out, okay. but I don't okay. know exactly where that was. Um, okay. And the, uh, I think, I think the, you know, Laker game was already over. It, the I, I, the twins was later than the mm -hmm. basketball. Okay. All right. Um, so once the baseball game was over, what did you do with the radio? Uh, I, I think it was still on. Okay. But not, you know, I, I I think I shut it off when I got closer to. Okay. When I got you know around high more. Okay. Why'd you shut it off? Well, that's well, well. We have to fast forward then a little bit. Okay. Oh, we can go back. Yep. And so I walk me through it. So again, I I turned the Miller corner. The second Miller corner, I guess, the one going now to high more. And I'm uh -huh. driving along, and then I I get to Highmore, and that's when I look to the right and I look to the left as I go through as I was going through town. I was thinking about getting gas, mm -hmm. and the one station to the south or to the left, there was a guy, and I just I remember his car was pointing back east, and he had his you know in the gas pump, and it looked closed though, mm -hmm. and I'm like eh, okay, so I looked at the looked to the north station, and there was three or four high school kids there. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at that side and and it looked closed too, so I said, well, I'll just keep going. Mm -hmm. And then okay. around there, that's when I, I believe I shut the radio off. And, uh, you know, I, I, I believe that happened, you know, shortly before the accident. I My intention at the time was to think about, I, we've got a couple very big, cases going on and I was mm -hmm. going to shut that off and uh, you know think about those cases is okay. what I intended to do uh, mm -hmm. you know quiet time okay All right. so you remember going through high more though absolutely I remember looking to the left and the right and like I told you the first time I remember looking at the signs Mm -hmm. You know, off to the right about the speed zone and the the distance to peer. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I, like I said, I think, you know, right right before that, that's when I turned off the radio. Mm -hmm. And if I, you know, I've been thinking about it. You know, I mean, what was I doing exactly? But I think I was looked down at the speedometer. 
because mm -hmm. I traditionally put it on cruise. Okay. Uh, not always, but a lot of the times. And I know I never got going very fast because I never locked it in the cruise. Okay. And uh, so you use the cruise control, but you know that on this case you hadn't got back into. Right. I, I think I had used it prior to the accident, you know, on the other stretch possibly, but I had not used it, uh, I had not engaged it yet. Right. Are those roads that you take from Pier to Redfield, are those all 65 mile per hour zones? I believe so, except okay. for the towns, of course. Except for the um, and, and sometimes I don't go that way. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't know if that matters. I mean, you can go another way. You can go to Miller, go out of Miller, and then go up to Redfield. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I didn't do that this right. time. Um, do you have any idea what you would have been setting your crews at when you were going? You, you know, right around 65, you okay. know, 65, 67, okay. you know. Okay, um, but didn't have the crew. Do you I never go more than four over, okay. ever, anywhere in the, you know, anymore. I just lock it in. Okay. How about your high beams? Do you usually use your high beams? I had used the high beams, but I had not clicked them on yet when the when I'd leaving Highmore. Okay. I used high beams from basically basically two Highmore. I mean, when, you know, I shut them down when we went through Miller and, of course, in Redfield. Mm -hmm. I would say I used my high beams appropriately. I used them on the road, but I did not have them up uh, yet um, coming out of Highmore. So getting to Highmore, you would have had them on, turned them off when you got in the Highmore to town, yeah. and then never turned them back on? Correct. Okay. So as you're going through Highmore, what else do you remember besides looking at the gas stations? Uh, they look closed, then what? Just it was a dark night. I uh -huh. mean, that's what I remember. I looked, I mean, I vividly remember I can see those people, you know, at the gas pump, you know, and such, and around the station and such, mm -hmm. but that's it. Okay. And nothing else sticks out, I guess. Okay. And then what do you remember happening next? Well, I guess when you say next, I mean, I, I, it was a hit, yep. and I I did not punch the brakes. Mm -hmm. I, I My military training, you don't punch, I've always been taught you don't punch the brakes because then you could spin. Okay. Uh, so I tapped the brakes three or four times trying to control the vehicle and, uh, you know, shake as you got to the side of the road. and brought it to control as best I could to safely get to the side of the road. Okay. I then, uh, obviously I, you know, there were some expletives and, you know, uh -huh. like what the hell happened, you know, uh -huh. and I put it in park and I do believe now you know, because quite frankly, Arnie, you made me remember when I showed you the picture, you know, I did put the flashers on, you know, because at first I just sat there for a minute going, what the hell happened? <laughs> and I hit the flashers and I got out of the car and I kind of just shook my head a little bit and looked around and, you know, and I then dialed 911 and I thought I was at Highmore but I didn't want to tell the 911 I was at the wrong town. Right. So I walked towards town talking with the 911 person who said, to the best of my recollection, obviously you guys can listen to that, but it said something to the effect of, hello, 911, this is the Attorney General. I am about a mile west of Highmore, I believe. I, I've hit something I, in the road, and I believe it was a deer. And the only reason I believe it was a deer, because that's 
what it's season. It, I just think it. I didn't see anything, but I believe that that's what happens. And you know, this time of year. Mm -hmm. And then I said, uh, she goes, who is this? And I said, I need some assistance. I said that somewhere in the, mm -hmm. in the call. And she says, uh, who is this? And I think I gave my name, Jason Roundsburg, versus mm -hmm. title. And then I said, yes, yes, I am near Highmore because I could see the sign. And you know, okay. but what I was, sign could you see? Uh, the green okay. town sign, I guess. I don't know what you call them officially. <laughs> right. Uh, so, tells yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I had walked back. How far from where your vehicle stopped to where you walked do you think you walked? I you walked, estimate. I know you don't yeah, know exactly. Yeah, I mean, I walked. Well, there's the one piece of my car that I saw on the on the sh on the shoulder right off the road. Is that that well, larger the larger piece? piece. Yep. I walked past that. Okay. Westbound past that, right? No, nope, eastbound. eastbound. I'm eastbound. sorry. Yep. yep, I'm going east at this okay. point. And then she said something to the effect the sheriff was the only one on duty and that he would be out soon. And I said that would be fine or something, you know, okay. And then I hung up and clicked from there over to my uh, camera f or my phone flashlight and started looking for the deer, which mm -hmm. I thought in, in the ditch. Mm -hmm. at that point and I walked the whole length back to my car and then I remember taking a photo the one I gave you of the car and then that's when the sheriff pulled up mm -hmm. so how close do you think you got to the city sign or the town sign a few steps past that you know I don't know five steps maybe past that that big chunk okay so just Ish. you were real close to that chunk, right? Okay. Because I thought, I thought obviously the animal would be close to that, with well, a collision point somewhere in there, mm -hmm. and looked around there and then walked back. Mm -hmm. But so you walked past the piece of, I walked past vehicle. the piece east, of vehicle east, of. east okay. towards Highmore. Yes. Okay. When you were walking past it, did you you had your flash your phone flashlight out? You said or was I that after that, that was after the phone call com concluded. Okay. And so when you're walking, were you on nine one one at the time when you were walking? Yes, I was walking and talking at the same time. Okay. Right. Walking and talking towards the sign. I would say I had an excited utterance. Yes, it is Highmore. I am near Highmore. Or some words to that effect. You know, I thought I was at Highmore. But again, I didn't want to say I was at Harold and then, which is the next town, right? And, mm -hmm. and send the officer to the wrong location, right? Yep. Okay. So you walk past, you're on the phone, and then when you start coming back, is that when you turn the flashlight, phone light on? Yeah. Within, you know, I hung up, or she hung up. I don't right. remember who hung mm -hmm. up. And then uh, I turned the the light on okay. soon thereafter. Okay. I don't know, you know. How soon? Right. Okay. And then you walked back towards your vehicle. I walked towards the vehicle. And like I said, I took a picture, and then that's when the sheriff pulled up. Mm -hmm. The sheriff pulls up, and he says, uh, you, know, what ha you know, what happened? And I said, well, I think I hit a deer. And so the sheriff looked at I mean, he, so I'm at the front corner taking that picture, and he walks up beside me, and he's looking at the car also. Okay. And he says something to the effect, well, at least it didn't hit the side window, you know, my my passenger side window. Right. I mean, he saw what other damage was there. Okay. And then he kind of looked the car over, I would say, and then he looked at, and I told him that, you know, that I, I tried to break and got it over as best I could. And then he looked at the car and he looked back at the wreckage, I would say, mm -hmm. and such. And then he said, well... Uh, grab your license. No, not not your license. Grab your registration and your insurance, and meet me back at the car. So I then walk back to the car, uh -huh. and when I get in the car, well, no, I had to get in my car uh -huh. to get those two items. And where were those items at? My registration's always above my visor. In it has a mirror, so you drop down the mirror, so you always have the registration there, and then the insurance was in the glove compartment, okay. which 
at this point had been ajar. Okay. The, it had opened up based on the collision. Uh, I guess the one thing I the one thing I remember that I told you at the beginning I remembered something. My airbags did not deploy. Right. It looked like from uh, photos. And I I think that's my car that Kella Land put out there, but you know we couldn't see it exactly. But it looked like the airbags had deployed then, so they did not deploy from the crash. I guess you know right. And so I guess I haven't seen my car since, so I don't know. Right. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. telling you. Okay. Go back to the car. He says, uh, well, he writes down, he, he, he takes those two items, and he writes me out the red ticket, which I gave you uh -huh. a, a yep. picture of. Sure did. And, um, and then he said, well, where do you live? Or words to, oh, where were you at? He talked, asked me where I was at. I said, well, I'm in Redfield. I went to a, a political event and uh, a Republican event over there, and he goes, well, you're not running this year, are you, already? And I says, no, but you're Attorney General, you're always running. You know, you're always, you know, out seeing the people, and I think that's what you gotta do. Hmm? Your extra bed, please. Sure. I went dead. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, you know, get out and find out what their concerns are, and talk with them, and uh, that's what you should do as a elected person. And he said something to the effect that, you know, he loved his job, but he doesn't like the politics of it. And I, you know, I, okay, I didn't really say much to that, I guess. And then he said, well, where do you live? Well, I started describing exactly where I lived. I think he meant, from what I, he said later, you know, that he just wanted to know what town I lived in, mm -hmm. you know, but I was telling him exactly where I lived in town. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm a little shook up. And he goes uh, to the effect of, uh, well, I can either take you to take you there, or you can drive. But it'll be an hour for a tow truck. We talked about a tow truck, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, so I was confused. I says, well, you, we just talked about a tow truck, but you said I can drive. I do think the car is drivable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the motor runs and. You know, and everything, but is it safe to drive? I was, you know, I was just, mm -hmm. this was cloudy of my why is, and he says, no, you can go to, I'll take you to my house, and I'll give you my car, and you can drive, or I can take you back. Well, somebody's offering me their car, or he's going to take his time to take me home. I, quite frankly, threw it back on him, and I says, whatever works for you, Sheriff, you know, or words to that effect. And he said, well, we'll take you to the house then, and we'll get you the uh, car. We then... But you didn't think that the car wasn't drivable? I thought the car, motor-wise, mm -hmm. could drive, but I didn't know how safe it was with the, the windshield mm -hmm. action. Right, okay. I, mean, I you know, I, you know I, don't, I didn't test it out, obviously. I, I got it to the side the best I could. Uh, but I guess I was deferring to the sheriff at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he, so he then takes me to his house. Um, real quick before we get to okay. that. So the sheriff, he looked at the damage. The vehicle. Did you guys, did the sheriff, while you were the present, did he look at all at for anything that you would have hit? Well, I know he looked at the, the car itself, and I know he looked at the wreckage, and I, I know, I believe he looked, he was looking in the ditch. Okay. As I was... As I, you know, I didn't watch him exactly and go back mm -hmm. to his car, but I was, you know, finding the registration, the insurance, looking around, and I looked back at him, and I thought I'd look, see him once, you know, glance in the ditch and such, mm -hmm. but... Right by where the cars were, though? The or cars like were... He didn't... Well, did you see him walk down the highway at all, like, looking at he, the ditch? No, neither one of us ever went east of the crash, you know, the, where the car stopped. Okay. Uh, we never went east of it. I mean, I took the picture, and that's when I stopped and then mm -hmm. kind of deferred to him. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only time you'd walk east was to find out if you were by high more. Oh, sorry. I said I said it backwards now. Yep. I didn't walk west of the car further. Okay. You know, I'd walk. I didn't walk any farther west, and I'd come to the front of the car and taken that picture. I did not walk west of the car. I only walked east prior to the sheriff arriving, as I earlier described. And then when I obviously walked back to 
the sheriff's car. I, I did look again in the ditch as I walked back to his car with my, uh, you know, I looked out there. I don't know if I, I don't think I used my phone mm -hmm. when I was just looking out when I walked back to the car, mm -hmm. you know, and. And so in, your, in relation to your car, so your car was facing west, the sheriff pulled up. Did he pull behind you? Yes, or? he pulled up behind me. Okay. Yes. Did he come from the no. east, or did he, he come and then like turn around, or how did that work? You know what I mean? I don't know how he how he ended up behind. I mean, I can only speculate. Okay. He, he uh, lives. No, no, that's fine. He lives a quarter mile from the crash yep. site, west, right the west right. of it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I, 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 yeah, he's, he he parked behind me, so okay. I don't know right. where he came okay. from. I guess he just appeared, and I right showed him the vehicle. You know, showed him the front and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, do you remember, did the sheriff have, like when he was looking around, did he have a flashlight or anything? Do you remember at all even? I don't remember. Okay. He, yeah, I mean, not, yeah, I don't remember. Okay, that's fine. Um, and any questions I ask, if you yep, don't no. remember, just right. say you don't remember. That's best. Mm -hmm. um, no, so I don't want to speculate. Yeah, yeah. I want to so, give you the facts. Um, yeah. When you were looking around or walking, to find out where you were at or anything. Did you move any of the debris? No. Okay. Didn't touch any didn't debris? Touch didn't. Okay. Did you happen to see if the sheriff, when he was out there, moved any debris? I did not. You didn't see, see him? what he did. Okay. You know, and then obviously I thought of later, obviously the the tow truck came and got my car, but uh -huh. that was after I left right. the scene. Uh-huh. You know, so okay. somebody moved the car and the tow truck and the sheriff because uh, as I started to say, I was at the house with him. He backs his car out. I I take it. I leave, and he pulled me over again. And he said, and I says, "Is there a problem, Sheriff? What what else can I do for you?" And he says, "You didn't give me the key to the car." So I give him all my keys, and then he gave them back and says, "No, just give me the drive key." Mm -hmm. And so that was it. Came out of his lane, and I went west at that point, and I gave him the key back. Okay. You know, so he had to obviously, I assume, went back to the crash site when the tow truck driver came because he's the one I gave the key to. Right. Okay. And then you headed back to Pier. I headed back to Pier. Okay. Uh, I called, my, as I said before, I called my father, Tim and Dave, and the sheriff. Mm -hmm. And I just coordinating. Uh, I, I guess I regularly tell Tim and Dave where I'm at. Okay. Uh, as Attorney General, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm traveling, especially by myself, where okay. I'm at, those two know where I'm at. Right. And so I told them that I believe I, you know, hit a deer and had mm -hmm. an accident, and uh, and I asked him if he would help me the next day take my car back, uh, take that car back to the mm -hmm. sheriff, and he said yes. And then I called the sheriff and said uh, I had driven to Pierre and I didn't see a tow truck pass me anywhere. You know, had it come yet? No. And when can I bring your car back? And he said, anytime, you know, bring it back in the morning, whenever it works for you. Okay. And that's what we did. Okay, so the call to the sheriff was just to set up... To set up the return of his vehicle. Okay. I mean, I again, I'm borrowing somebody else's property, and I yeah. think I should get it back to him. Right. <laughs> you know? Did the sheriff say anything about the accident or anything? You're asking no questions nope. about that? No, you know, he just, he said that the tow truck driver hadn't been there yet, mm -hmm. and uh, bring it back whenever it worked for me in the morning. Okay. All right. So then you go back the next morning, correct? Okay. So Tim meets me at my house approximately mm -hmm. eight o'clock, and I said, "Follow me." And uh, you know, I, we did see three deer the next day going east back to Highmore. We saw three in the daylight, you know, and we slowed mm -hmm. down because of those. Mm -hmm. And then we, I said, I wanted to go to Highmore and fill it up with gas because I thought. That was only the right thing to do again, that somebody loaned me their vehicle to give it back to them full. Mm -hmm. And so we filled it up, and as we drove by, the, some of the wreckage was still there on the road. Mm -hmm. Did it look like it was in the same place that it was? Uh, I don't know about don't that. Know. Yeah, okay. If it moved or not. Right. I mean, it's, okay. you know, obviously 10, 12 hours yeah. have passed. Yeah. Right. And I get moved. from darkness to daylight. I get it. Right. Yep. Um, I don't know okay. if it moved or not, but it was still there, and I thought it could be a problem for another traveler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had thought along the way, I didn't look on the south side of the ditch. 
Mm -hmm. And so I told Tim, well, let's park on the north side, look there, and then let's look on the south side, because maybe the deer glanced off and went to the other side of the road. I did not check that the night before on the south side. Well, then we pull up to the, the, the site area, and again, I, I never saw... You know, my car is gone at that point, mm -hmm. so I don't know where my car is in relation to the body when I found it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went, I went west, and Tim went east, and then I found the body, mm -hmm. and I just came to Tim and said, Tim, 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 you got to come here. I found a body. So Tim came up and looked at it, and then I said, well, now it's daylight. I can see the sheriff's house. And I said, we got to go get the sheriff immediately. And he agreed, and we, so we did leave the site mm -hmm. without calling 911, but my thought process is this is the quickest way I can get the sheriff, is to go to his house. He's right there. And so he walks out and says, good morning. And I said, I don't know. I said, sheriff, I found a body. And his response was, you're shitting me. So, and I obviously thought that was genuine, you know, that he was surprised that that was the case. Mm -hmm. And I said, you need to come with us. Here's your keys back. I handed him his keys to his car, and we just left it where, where I drove the, into the property at. And I got in with Tim, and the sheriff followed us back to the, to the site. The sheriff said to the effect of, well, I, well, first we got out, and then we showed him where it was at. And then he said... Well, how are you doing? Well, I says, well, I'm pretty shook up right now. And uh, and he mm -hmm. says, well, Tim, you take care of him and take him back, and I'll call DCI. And that's where we left it. Okay. So when you said that the sheriff seemed genuine when he said you're shitting me. Well, that was his reaction. Mm -hmm. You're okay. shitting me. Okay. Like, he was genuinely surprised right. that there was a body out mm -hmm. there. Okay. I mean, not, not to take away from him in any uh -huh. fashion. That was just his... Right. His response. Okay. Um, more of the reason I'm asking that, okay, yep. you're clarifying that, is are, are you now questioning or were you questioning on whether the sheriff was genuine about no, that? No, no, okay. uh, no, I just no, 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 I want to make sure that's clear. I mean, if I said that wrong. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Nope. He, I mean, he was just, he was surprised. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he was surprised, as surprised as I was minutes previously in finding the body. Right. You know, just kind of a mm -hmm. shock. You're shitting me, right? You know, and mm -hmm. I mean, I thought I took that reaction as genuine. Like, well, clearly he didn't know there was a body either. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's you know was all settling in to me. That, right. You know. So when you spoke to the sheriff at his house, do you remember what was he wearing? Was he like dressed like he was ready to go on duty? Do you remember or? I mean, at, at eight thirty in the morning, you okay, might catch him in well, so pajamas. This, so this is nine thirty in the morning. Okay, nine thirty. Okay, ish. Yep. You know, because it's we left we left pier around eight, and then like I said, we got gas. Uh, we uh, went to the crash site, and then we went to the sheriff. And I guess I I don't remember if he's wearing a uniform or not, but mm -hmm. I would say he's dressed like you folks. I mean, he dressed. Okay. Like he was gonna, you know, go out, you know, be out for the day appropriately. He was not in right. pajamas, right, per se, mm -hmm. you know, or some kind of night right. clothing. Yeah. He was in standard clothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the reason I ninth, eight thirty, nine thirty, you might catch me in, <laughs> right, you know, on Sunday, sure. on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, you might right. catch me in, not ready to go, right, or, 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 you know, I guess. I don't remember him look like he was going to go to church, but I don't look like he's like he's going to go to pajamas either. I mean, okay. just standard, okay. standard clothes. Mm -hmm. All right. So you showed the sheriff. He said he'd take over from there, and you and Tim. He released you and Tim from the scene. He released me and Tim from the scene, uh, and said he would contact DCI. Okay. All right. And that's what I remember, mm -hmm. uh, except for. Uh, at some point, you know, the Highway Patrol asked if I would do a blood draw, and I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I did that up at the jail. That's when I asked you mm -hmm. where we were meeting exactly at the top of the hill. There's the, actually the jail. Oh, okay. You know, so right. I would, you know, mm -hmm. I met up there for that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that officer, uh, Highway Patrol, was Schneider. Okay. Was his name. Yep. And he, he coordinated that with Tim. Uh, 
Okay. Because I called my father on when I got home, uh -huh. or I got back to the office. And while I think while I was doing that, that's when Tim talked with Highway Patrol to line that up. So you said when you got back to the office, you went to the office, not went, home? Yes, went to the okay. office. Yeah. Okay. What did you do at the office? Wait. Just waited? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just kind of... Well, he had said to Tim to look after me for a little while, so uh -huh. not to go home and leave me alone, I guess, was mm -hmm. Tim's thing. He said, what? Because I think it was Tim's idea. Let's just go to the office. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Tim stayed at the office and two. Yeah, he was with me. Okay, all right. And I know we went and we came here and did the blood draw. And we went back to the office for a little while, I think. And then he, you know, asked if I was okay and stuff to go home and such. And because now I don't have a car mm -hmm. at all. So I know he had to take me home at some point. Right, okay. All right. Um. So I just want to go back a little bit to when the accident happened. Um, what is the last thing you remember upon impact when you hit something? What is the very last thing you remember about hitting, or, you know, at impact? I think that I had just shut the radio off and looked down at the speedometer. Okay. I mean, I shut the radio off, you know, just soon pre, you know, from High Moor in, you know, High Moor to the site somewhere. And then I think I looked down at the speedometer for, I'd just seen the speed sign and I did not engage the cruise. Okay. And then I, I shook to get to the. Do you remember how you were feeling when you were driving home from Redfield that night? I mean, I, were you I, feeling tired, fatigued I, at I all? I do not feel fatigued. I felt normal, mm -hmm. uh, normal driving. Uh, I did not feel fatigued, um, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you remember were you using your phone at all for anything besides to make a couple phone calls? Uh, um, nope. The only phone calls I made were to my father, which mm -hmm. ended prior to Miller. Yep. yep. Okay. I'd set. I have two phones, as you know. Mm -hmm. One was on the passenger seat, and the other one was on my console, and I did not, you know, use them. You know, then okay. You know, I, I do not have the phone in my hands when the crash happened. I had, you know, our hands on the wheel and looking at the speedometer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so as, as best I can relate yep. that. So your phones, when to unlock them, do you use a like mine? I can use I can use a code or m uh, my thumb. Uh huh. Um, I think my kids can actually use a facial recognition thing. They hold it in front of their face. Right. Um, how how are yours set up? One doesn't have anything, and which one doesn't have anything? Uh, the personal phone, the Person. Droid. Okay. No security on that. Just no in. security on that one. Okay. And how about your work phone? You have to punch code in. That's okay. the one. So you can't just use a thumbprint or anything like that. You actually gotta enter in a, right. a code. How many numbers is your code? Four, Four numbers. Okay. But you don't remember using your phone for anything other than phone calls or yeah. to your dad that night on the way home? Right, yeah. Okay. How's your vision? Good. I Do you have night vision problems, anything like that? No. I, uh, I, I'm in the Army, so I had a vision test a year ago. Sure. And I came out fine. Uh, I have uh, no glasses or anything. And I know some people have trouble seeing stars and stuff at night. And I was just curious if you experienced any of that stuff. No. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no. Nope. That's fine. So have you had any other contact with the sheriff at all? Since? No. I have not okay. talked. Uh, uh, I have not had any contact at all with the sheriff. Uh -huh. I think uh, Tim might have reached out because we were trying to figure out who the family was. Oh, okay. You know, to offer condolences, sympathy. Uh huh. Uh, and you know, I think Tim might have. You know, 
do you know these people? Do they have a relative who who mm -hmm. is the right person? Were you guys ever able to get anywhere with that? Uh, no. Uh, I, I no, not at all. Okay. I mean, we found a different way to find out than a funeral home. They put the obituary and put the funeral home of, uh -huh. of the, where that had happened, and then we learned that the father passed away about six weeks prior. We were looking okay. to reach out to the mother, uh -huh. but we saw that and did not reach out then because okay. obviously she just lost her husband and then six weeks later loses a son. Uh -huh. So we right. just didn't think that was a, the right time. Right. Because his okay. the father was still on the funeral home registry. Mm -hmm. Also. Okay. All right. Um, so on your phone then, you have like any you have email on your work phone, I assume. Correct. Oh, okay. Um, how do you open up your email? Is it just like I have a mail icon, basically? Right. You I click can hit on that. that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Is that for a South Dakota State email or? Correct. Okay. Do you have other emails besides your work email? Yes. Okay. But your work, you just click something and boom, you're in. Great. Right. Um, what other kind of emails do you have? Campaign email. Okay. And personal email. And then military email. Okay, so the campaign email, what would that, is that like a Gmail, a Yahoo mail? A Yahoo mail. Okay, that's Yahoo. And how about your personal it's also a Yahoo, different one. Okay. Military, what's that? Is that like a... It's a mil... Dot it's mil. A dot mil yeah. dot U.S. Yeah, or whatever. It's your name okay. dot mil at mail dot mil or something. Yeah. Okay. And you had both phones with you when you went to Correct. the dinner? And then you brought them... You had them both when you came home, right? Correct. Okay. All right. What's the address for your campaign? Do you have any Google Mail accounts? Any Gmail? Yes. Uh, okay. So it's more campaign related again. Okay. But so you have it's, the, it's the same. Okay. And that's a campaign email? Yes. Okay. Predominantly, yeah. Okay. I assume they're all kind of used in a little bit. I mean, a try not to. Try. Yeah. I mean, some people and you mm -hmm. you meet them and you move them over to a different email. Right. You know, sometimes. Okay. So now, any of these emails, do you have to to get into those? How do you get into those on your phone? Well, first off, I don't get into the Gmail one on my phone okay. at all. Okay. Ever. Okay. Uh, I. I don't like Gmail. <laughs> it's not as easy user friendly for me. And then the other one you have to go on to the to the internet, I guess. Okay. So you actually have to go in the click on Safari or whatever, go into Yahoo right. and then sign in. Right. Okay. And then my military email, quite frankly I just ever use that on my laptop that they've given me. Okay. Because it's complicated. It's got long passwords and stuff you gotta enter in every time to get the VPN at all. Yeah. With your with your laptop. Yeah. Okay. So when you 
Mm -hmm. um, you don't remember going into any of these email accounts while you were driving home that night? No. Okay. Um, are there any websites that you do frequently use um, that you frequent on your phone? Well, when I'm around my house or around, you know, uh -huh. a building, maybe you check okay. out the news and such, you know. I mean, I try to use my laptop and and or, you know, personal, you know mm -hmm. personal computers, laptops, desktops, stuff like that, mm -hmm. predominantly. Mm -hmm. You know, I use them once in a right. while. Do you have any certain sites you check the news on? Particularly, any favorites or common ones? Well, now with political season, you know, I actually look at Fox, CNN, and MSNBC. I look at the three big networks, I guess I call it. Um, that would be what I traditionally look at, I guess. Okay. How about any of the local newspapers? Do you do those online, then? <laughs> I haven't since this and until this happened. <laughs> okay, I, I bet mean, not. I, I was not a normal 10 o'clock at news or watcher of the frequent news. I guess uh -huh. we get the Argus Leader paper and the Rapid City Journal paper uh -huh. at the office, and I tend to look at those, mm -hmm. but I will look at those at the office mm -hmm. periodically. Okay. Um, so what would you think, though, if I told you that when they did the phone extraction, uh -huh. they found some internet activity on your phone around okay. that time? Well, I, I guess uh, I, I, I don't not use my phone, but I uh -huh. did not use it at the time of the crash. No. Okay. Well, were you using it up to the time of the crash? You know, not that I recall. Are you aware what phones will actually tell us, Jason? Uh, yeah, uh, somewhat, you know. Okay. So they're they're pretty straightforward, right? Okay. And there isn't any manipulation that you can do with. Right, them. right. I didn't do anything to mm -hmm. them. Or, yeah. So right, yeah. no, right. right. And we didn't either. Right, right. Yeah. That's right. that's what yeah. I'm trying right. to say. Right, right. And it's like the the best I can recall is that the one phone was on my uh, on the seat, and I never touched that one. Which that's one? The droid. That's the one they said they couldn't get the information off of and would have to mail to New Jersey. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And it slammed into the wheel well is what I remember. The other one I remember, you know, I would say prior to or right at Highmore, it was I set it down on you know, but you know, through the journey it fell down a few times, you know, but onto the onto the gear shift. But I was not using it at the time. I know that. Okay. So you said it. You set it down about when you got to Highmore. Yeah, around Highmore, the the console. There's a little mm -hmm. console. I set it on top, and I know I had the both plugged in. You know, both were charging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it would slip down, and I'd pick it up, and uh -huh. you know. So what were you doing with it before you got to Highmore? If you set it down at Highmore, I, th well, I, 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 I look at the time and such. Uh -huh. I know I do that. I I would open it up, and I. would see the time better, uh -huh. uh, but you know, I glance at it, you know, okay, nothing sticks out, I guess. When you say I glance at your phone, what do you mean by that? Glance and see what time it was, okay. you know, just, uh -huh. you know, a periodic check. I, I sometimes listen to podcasts, but I was not okay. that night. Uh, that's another app I use yep. sometimes. But I will play it and it sits down. Right. Um, Are you able to Bluetooth your phone in? So that if you like listen to a podcast or receive yes. a phone call, uh, do you, is it hands free for you? Yes. Okay. And or you can just hear it from the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The Suburban, which I have for work, I can Bluetooth it better than my car. Okay. Lay it on this. I'd lay it right the same place there. I guess mm -hmm. I always lay it the same place. Okay. See, so lay it there and just let the speaker. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Um, so, were you using your phone besides for the phone call to your dad, which we know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's right. Were you using your phone at all for any other activities on that drive home that night? I, I you know, I don't believe, I don't 
I didn't have any texts that I sent, mm -hmm. and typically if I would text, I would do voice to text, which I know I didn't do that mm -hmm. night. And uh, the work email, but I didn't do any of that. You know, I could, you know, I guess that's what I remember. Okay. You don't remember signing into a Gmail account, though? No. Oh. Okay. Guess it's just always hard to get to where you need that to go. That one's a hard one to get to, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you do have two Yahoo. Yes. Accounts. Do you remember signing into either of those? Because when you go in mm -hmm. and you want to go on your mm -hmm. Yahoo account, mm -hmm. do you have to? actually manually enter in your username and password or are they like do they autofill? They autofill. Okay. Yeah. So you'd have to go in and then click sign in. They would be there and then probably another sign in thing or whatever. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Do you remember being on either of those? I guess it's possible that I could have checked those, yeah. Okay. All right. Um do you ever go on the Dakota Free Press? Yes. What is that? That's a blog. Okay. That's a blog here, politics, uh -huh. yes. Oh, it's a political blog? Yeah. Okay. And then there's another one then, Dakota War College. Okay. Also a blog. All right. I guess you see what the headlines are more mm -hmm. than anything, yes. How about um, Real Clear Politics? Okay, yes. Okay, what's that one? Uh, politics, and it has a whole bunch of stories and uh -huh. and, and stuff okay. of, of the day, but that's more national politics, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. So that's more of a national site, not mm -hmm. where I so Dakota Free Press is a South Dakota political blog? Yes. Okay. Um, how about um, what's Just the News? Just the News. No, I don't recognize that one. Okay. All Just right. Have you ever read the article, Riding the Dragon? It's a documentary about Joe Biden. I, I, it's not familiar to me, okay. I guess. All right. Well, here, I'll kind of show you what I'm where yeah, getting yeah, that absolutely. stuff from. Yes, absolutely. So, here's kind of the information that was put together on your phone. From And here's our times. So, outgoing call, 1024. Mm -hmm. That's what time you made the 911 call. Mm -hmm. So, and that's all fine and dandy, you know. But leading up to that, at 1020... You unlocked your phone, signed into your Yahoo mail account. Mm -hmm. Also, then it, and then signed out. Um, at ten twenty forty nine, you were on the Dakota Free Press okay. site. These are all on your work phone. Mm -hmm. um, a minute later, you were on the Real Clear Politics website. Okay. And then about a minute later. Um, this article was pulled up through the just the news, okay. which could have been something that mm -hmm. you were on this, and it had a link to click to get you to this one mm -hmm. regarding this. It's an article about Joe Biden and something mm -hmm. and with China. So you were on that up to about we're going to estimate probably a minute before the accident. Okay, you were on that. Um, do you remember any of these? Well, I I remember looking at, but that's when I set my phone down. Mm -hmm. Prior to, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Because then, like I said, we're looking at a minute to two minutes before you call nine one one. Right, right. So, with I mean, the concern being is that okay. we know that from the time of impact, there was a time period that went by before you called nine one one. Right. You had to realize what was going on, come to a stop, get your bearings back about you. Get out, look at the damage a little bit, figure out what the hell's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you're trying to figure out where you are. Call 911. So it's reasonable to say that there was a minute to two minutes that passed from 
impact to when you were actually on the phone with 911, right? That would be reasonable, correct? I mean, I guess, yeah. So when we look at that, our concern is everything that we're seeing here is appearing that you were on your phone reading political stuff at the time. Um, but I just wasn't. <coughs> I, I set it down. <coughs> I know I did. Did you maybe set it down after the accident? No, because I grabbed it and went out. Mm -hmm. And it was sitting in like the, the center council center area. Center council area, absolutely. Okay. So when the impact happened, that phone was sitting in the center council. Absolutely. Okay. See where this obviously. Well, yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's an issue. Part, part of this, Jason, is we have a job, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. People make mistakes. Right. And. We're thinking you made one. I don't remember being on my phone. I set it down, and I shut the radio off, and I looked at the, I looked at the speedometer. The best I remember. Yeah. But I don't. That's why I was, you know, worrying. How how fast does that transmit? That that you you do that. You know that you set it down, and I never shut the browser. I guess a lot. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. But it shows you unlocked it and such. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a tough position. We right. know, right. we know, but it's like uh, it sure appears to be a problem here, and we want to get ahead of it, right? Just like you do, right? I I I get it. I know mm -hmm. what kind of position you're in. It's it's tough, mm -hmm. but. These don't just appear too. Right, I understand. I mean, you. I mean, I look at stuff. You're smart enough to know. I that look technology at is is. But I did instant. I remember I sat it down because I was getting rid of distractions because I wanted to think about these cases. But you know, I shut it down there. And it could have been just at that moment. But you you know right. the you know the speed of technology today. You're a smart right. man. Right. And it's like. The, s the speed of technology is amazing, mm -hmm. and I was not looking at it when it happened. I, I won't say that I was. No. I I set it down, and I went to hit the... You know I shut the radio off, and I looked at the speedometer. Mm -hmm. So is it maybe when all that was going on that the impact happened? I mean, well, that, I mean that's, that's the best message mm -hmm. that I can remember. Boom. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and it could be instantaneous, right? right. And we get right, that. right. Yeah. We get yes. that. It's, I mean, that's it could be instantaneous, and and like you said the last time, right? Wham, there it is. Mm -hmm. And as you're putting it down, it could be wham, there it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I set it down. I remember sitting it down. It's the I I pretty confident. I shut the radio off, and then then went you know uh, looked at the speedometer. I mean, it's the best I remember. And then wham. I was not looking at my phone. I know it, the law, and I, I was not looking at it at the time. It happened. No. You've been kind of called out on that before, too, haven't you? Mm, I don't know what you mean by that. So somebody, when you were texting or tweeting when you were going through the Black Hills, well, that I, was I, a similar type situation where. Well, yeah. I, I mean, and you got kind of called out on it. That's what I mean. Right. And they. Mm -hmm. We heard about all that. We, mm -hmm. Joe and I, have done. We want to cover every basin right. we have. Right. And I can assure you, we have gone as as far. Well, as obviously, I'm political. I get called out on lots of stuff that yeah. doesn't look necessarily how it looks you know right and it may or may not be appropriate right mm -hmm. right. Granted. right and then right so I can see where in a situation like this all of a sudden this is wham mm -hmm. now it's in your face mm -hmm. now what do I do and it's like I don't know what just happened to me mm -hmm. I just know that something's going on really serious here and I got to figure it out and I, I kind of think that's what you're I've, I've done this for 40 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I started in 1981. Mm -hmm. I'm on my 39th year. Right? right. So in that time, I've had situations like this before mm -hmm. where all of a sudden you have to make a decision, mm -hmm. and it's fast, and it's, it's going to last forever. Mm -hmm.
and I can see where it's like, oh, I should not have done this. I should not have been doing this. And now I'm kind of in a jam. What do I do? I, I still believe I was not on my phone when the moment happened. And, but like, you, but, I laid it down. but you, you agree that it could have been at that moment that you were putting it down. I, I still believe I put the phone down and reached to the, shut the radio off. You know, now, was that 10 seconds, you know, 5 seconds, 20 seconds? I don't know. But, you know, wham. It's close relation, I guess. Yeah, it's really close. Mm -hmm. Right. But I was not doing it at the time of the impact. I set the phone down. I know I did. Do you remember reading that article at all? No. It's basically about Joe Biden. I, I looked at it as well. Okay. Because when we get these, right, Jason, we can go look at what you're looking at. Right, right, right. Yeah. And it's it's about, you know, yeah, about some conspiracy with Joe Biden in China. In and China. Who knows? I, I didn't read. The I book. guess I would say I glance at headlines a lot. You know, sure. Mm -hmm. I don't read articles when I'm driving. Right. And, and it probably is an intriguing headline. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would guess. Right. Right, because when we enter in the address that was on your phone, mm -hmm. it actually takes you to the article. It's not just like a headline where you scroll down and see other headlines or whatever. You were on that article. Okay, so like you go from Real Clear Politics mm -hmm. to the article, and you can click on. That's what Real Clear Politics is. You click on article. Mm -hmm. Sure, and then they yep. take you to the article. So, right, yeah. kind of what I was saying is I think you were right. probably in Real Clear Politics, clicked on this riding the dragon, which took you to just the news and that article. Okay. Uh, but yeah. I'm speculating, yeah, I don't too, on, yeah. I'm guessing right. on that. Yeah, um, I've never heard of just the news, no. Right. Which made me think, then, that you were on Real Clear Politics, clicked on an article, and right. they probably have it embedded in their site that you go to these sites and to, for the article. Right. Um, but you don't remember reading that article no. at all? Uh, okay. Like I said, I glance at headlines at best. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, I, I know you said you glanced at headlines. This one, you actually went into the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, you actually, right, but it went and it took you to the article. Right, right. Yeah. So. But then that's the headline there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, my, my, my recollection is I'm getting rid of distractions because I'm going to think about those two cases. I know those cases. I'm setting it down, shutting it off. So that part of like we were just talking about, Jason, and the part that you had told us in our last interview where it was, I didn't see what I hit until the impact. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I that, never, I that never saw. Was, that's your quote. Okay. So in, in okay. light of that, that would make sense. That right there would make sense. You're putting it down, wham, and then then your head's up. It's like I just hit something. Again, does, does that sound logical? Well, I'm getting rid of distractions, and I look, you know, like I said, I shut, I, I remember my hand, you know, for that radio, and then to the speedometer is what I believe happened. So you had your phone call. Let's just back up a little bit. Okay. So you had your phone call, and then... With, with my father, are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, okay. yep, yep, yep. And then even the second one with your dad. How about on your way there? Were you on your phone talking to anybody then? Do you remember what you were looking at when you were driving out there? No, I don't think I called anybody. Okay. Do you remember what you were looking at? I might have looked at articles and stuff again, yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's 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 hard. Mm -hmm. because right. I've, I've driven it. Right. It is not an exciting road. Right. I can guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. and but I, li I do remember I listened, like I told you before, I started to listen to these, uh, and they're in the car yet, I told you, the uh, discs. Sure. They're, uh, they're books on tape. Yeah. 
And I listened to them for a while, but I just didn't like either one of them. Yeah, you said they didn't. Yeah, they're they're not intriguing at all. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, do you do both then? Were you on your phone while you're listening to the book? Usually well? not, no. Okay. Just one or the other, yeah. Mm -hmm. How much time did you spend looking for your insurance card? Hmm. The insurance card took a little longer. I mean, the other was right there. And then, because I remember I looked at it, and then I, it was not the right one. It's like the year behind. Sure. You know, and I looked at it, and I, and I, that wasn't right. And I looked at it a little while longer, and I took it back to the sheriff. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I, I don't got the right one, you know, I mean, I think I, was well, he was writing it out, and he says, hell, nobody's got the right one, you got about five of them in the car, he said some of that effect. Sure. Mm -hmm. you know. And that was, the, that was on the visor, the other was in the glove box? The glove box, yes. Did you have to take things out of the yes, glove box? Yes, I had to move stuff around, yes. Okay. Yes. Did you notice anything in the, on the passenger side while you were doing that? Just glass, I mean, I was staying away from the glass, I guess. Okay. I didn't spend a lot of time. So, when you're when you're doing that, are you leaning over the console? Yes, or are you from the driver's door, leaning over. Yes. Okay. So you can kind of see in the glove box and right. it, which and is already popped open. It's already popped open. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, did you see the glasses right next to that? I did not. Okay. You showed me the glasses the first time. That's they're the first time. They're Joe's glasses. I wondered. I wondered. I wondered about that. So that means his face came through your windshield. <sighs> it's a tough thing. Oh. I was thinking that his face did not come through because it would have been. I thought there'd been blood everywhere then. Now you know. I after I thought about it. Yeah, I and mean, then you've had time. Right. His glasses are right there, Jason. Those are Joe's. I did those, not. Those I did not see the glasses until you saw. You showed me. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh. So the only way for them to get there is through the windshield. Wow. At the impact, did you look over and see anything? I did not see anything. I mean, it just it was. Again, I I then was looking to to get it to the side. I did not see anything. No, absolutely not. You know, not. It shattered and I probably cringed or something, but I was just trying to get it to the side. I did not see him. I did not know there was a human until the next day. Okay, so no. when the glasses are, so when the glasses are in there, it's like his lenses and we have a witness we we've, we've talked to witnesses that actually had seen had seen them out there as well. I did in not fact, see those glasses until fact, you showed. It. Yeah, and so we know they're Joe's. Okay, and I know that doesn't help you feel any better. Oh, no, and I know you feel bad about this, Jason. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I mean, no matter what happened, somebody right. died. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean. You you have to look at it from our from oh, our, our our side of it. We're mm -hmm. we're just trying to find mm -hmm. the facts. We know what we know, and then we're explaining it, um, you know, as best as we can. We know certain things. We know those are his glasses. They were on his head because they were seen on his head. They ended up in your car. I never saw him. Until okay. you showed them to me. Okay. I never saw them, no. One of the other things that we know, Jason, is you weren't in the middle of the road. You were on the shoulder. And I know it happens fast, because it's happened to me. We have three people putting him next to the grass. 
so we knew something was happening. I mean, you're a smart man. You know, we're, Joe and I have done this job a long time. We know what the evidence is going to show us, what the evidence does show us. I don't remember. I remember being in the road, but you know, it showed me what the evidence shows. But. Yeah, yeah. So part of the evidence that is really convincing is there is bone scrape on the on the inside of the rumble bars, and that's where his leg was likely broke. That's where the pieces were at. So how did he get? farther down the road. I mean, the ride? How did that... His face was in your windshield, Jason. Think about that. And you're going oh. 65 to 70 miles per hour, so from the time it takes you to slow down, I and you figure how far you went at 65 to 70 miles per hour just before you it clicks that you need to stop. But it doesn't show that I braked a few times? You know, I trying to stop? It wasn't... We, we test tested your brakes, your brakes work fine. Uh -huh. There's also ABS, so they don't skid. Okay, yeah, I've heard that. Yes, I've heard about that. So not only do they not skid, they slow you down relatively fast, uh -huh. but they don't skid, because each one of the brakes are working independently. Okay. Each wheel. Okay. Each wheel. I don't, you know, so understand all that, but yes, I so understand. So that's kind of how that works. Okay. Okay. And so you got to think about the momentum, and as you're going, Sooner or later, the stopping power is going to make him pop out. Okay. And he goes into the ditch. And you would think, I guess I thought, if that's what happened, he, you know, well, you know, I, you know, breaking multiple times, he'd have fallen off, you know, not just at the last time. Because, see, I never saw him in relation to the car. So I don't know where he was in relation to the car. Fine. You mean as his body? Yeah. His body right. was, or right. what yeah. are you trying to... Okay. Right. Yeah, because so the car they took away, and I found the body the next day, I so never saw the car with the body, or so vice versa, you know. We know that his face came through your windshield. We know that. We already talked about that. That's, I would think, substantially clear that that's what happened. We also have the imprint on the hood where his body... Well, at least part of his body likely was riding. At some point in time, he, he rolls off, takes out the mirror, and slides into the ditch. I, I never I want you saw to be, him. I want you to be really honest right now. I am. I okay. never okay. saw him. I got another question for you. Okay. Okay. Did you see the flashlight he was carrying? No. Ever. Uh -huh. When you walk back to town? Uh, no, no flashlight. It was pitch dark out there. Right. And with it being pitch dark, we went out and tested it. Okay. We picked up the flashlight. Right. Okay. The flashlight was still on when Joe and I got to the scene. Okay. It had not been touched. Uh huh. We picked it up and the light is still on. Okay. We talked to a witness that had just seen the light had seen him walking with the light. Okay. After the crash, did you see that light in the dark? Because it's pitch dark. You'd, if there's something glowing, right. you would, it would make sense for you to see it. Right. I did not see any light, no. Are you certain? I am absolutely certain. Just because, Jason, we went out there another right. night with that flashlight um, recently uh -huh. and put it back in the same spot it was in okay. with it back on. Uh -huh. And it, it's hard to miss. I mean, it truly is hard to miss when you're out there, especially if you're walking back towards Highmore. Right. And we walked on both sides of the highway to okay. get... Yeah. We, we wanted to give you yep. the benefit no, of the doubt. No, absolutely. We wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt. Because we knew you walked towards Highmore. Yes. So on your way back, we walked on both the south side and the north side, and that flashlight was like a beacon. I don't know if I turned around at the wrong spot then or what. I don't know. I did not see a flashlight. I didn't see him in the face. No, I did not. I did not. I did not know it was a man until the next day. No. I think you had an idea it was something other than a deer, though. 
I I just believed it was a deer. I okay. do. I that's his, I, I know it sounds, but I've never hit a man before. I hit a I've hit you know hit a deer because that's so the time of season to do that. In your nine one one call, though, Jason, you say I hit something. Right, because I don't know what it was, but I assumed assumed it was a deer. I never saw a deer. I never saw a man. I just assumed it was a deer. I hit something. I just assumed it was a deer. Because what else would there be? I I had no, and I still don't believe, you know, I would not expect a man to be on the side of the road in dark like it was. I would not think that a person would be out there at that time. I would think a deer, though, would hit you at that time in this season with crops and everything. I did not know. Uh -uh. Hmm. I did not know it was a man until the next day. And I, I guess the best witness to that is Tim the next day, who saw my reaction, you know, and that I was extremely shook up that it was a that was a person. I think you'd have been shocked no matter when. Well, I agree with that. I mean, I don't think anybody would ever right. disagree right. with that. Absolutely. So, if anybody. I mean, this lady down in Hot Springs the other day hit somebody, obviously. So part of me has some, has some belief that you maybe saw something the night before. And what I'm going to do is just a, a, a little demonstration. I'm going to take a white piece of paper. This room was pitch dark. Okay. And there was any light. Would you see that because of the contrast of the color around it? Maybe, maybe not. I don't necessarily believe you would. Okay. And that's it. So mm -hmm. we, we did this as well. Mm -hmm. so the grass out there is obviously green. Right. He is less than two feet off of the road. Less than two feet into the grass. You know, you, you found him. Right. Less than two feet. Did you see something white laying there? Because, I mean, as you know, he didn't have clothes on that were covering the white part of his body. I mean, you're a smart man. You, know, you would understand that because there's such a contrast. I did not see him the night before. I don't know where he is in relation to my car because I never saw him and the car together. You would have to tell me where he was because I did not see him in relation to the car ever. He was very close to that large piece of debris though. He was? He was? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because well, it's... Cause no, because the night, the day before, we stopped where the debris was. I, I guess if you had asked me that question at the beginning, I would have said he was up the road from the debris, that large piece of debris. No, he's just not very far from. I'm not saying he was right even with. Yeah, he wasn't right, yeah, right even with. He, he wasn't very far. Mm -hmm. I mean, because think about it. You said you parked at that piece of debris on the 13th in the morning when you guys came Well, back. we parked around it. Right around it. Kind of like the starting point of yeah. where to look. And you didn't walk very far, though. I walked up. The, I mean, we walked west from that, though. I thought quite a ways. You know, I mean, quite a ways is a relative term. Right. I, I mean, but because I went back towards Tim, I guess I'd have to maybe ask Tim where where do we park in relation to that piece of debris? I guess if because we had two vehicles, one on each side, and what. I did not see him the yeah. night before. And I'm not saying that no. he was within 10 feet of that debris, but he was not very far from that large piece of debris laying on I mean. Okay. I guess I would have said the next day, you know, that he was a ways from that, yes. You would have to agree he was right next to the road, though, where you fall. He was on a slope, yes. A little bit of a slope. Yep. But uh, we, measured, we measured it's less than two feet. Oh, my God. And if he's not by my car, 
Okay, he's, not be, he's not going to be right by your car where you stopped. We, okay. we determined where your car was stopped at. Good, because I thought you would with the picture. <laughs> and we did, you know. We did. Yeah. I went around, I didn't check on that side of the car that night. I checked on, the, I went around to take the photo when the sheriff came. Do you normally wear a Fitbit, Jason? No. Do you have a tracking, a tracking app on your phone? I don't know. So when, as you walk, GPS tracks you. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Apple Fit. Okay. It's yeah. Apple I mean, Fit. Okay. It's just an app on your then phone. Then it's an app that I don't know about. Yeah. 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 It counts your okay. steps. It counts your steps. Okay. And it just run off the GPS. Uh huh. And so we know you're on that side of the road. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah, I, yeah. I never left. I, yeah, I, I you guess stayed I, on that side. You said that earlier. Right. Even. I guess I, what I was trying to say is, I think when I came back, I came out around the front, and then that's where I took the photo here. I, I, didn't, I didn't go around. You're uh, saying this would be your car. That's, if that's my car, car, yes. You went around I went this way. This way on the highway. It's it's not that close to your car. Okay. It's yeah. not that close to your car. Okay. Well, no, the, the the debris is because I'm saying I didn't look here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you would have found nothing. Right. Other than washer fluid, that's the only thing. That's what you said earlier yeah. in the first time. Mm -hmm. Go back sixty feet, at least, yeah, Six, something like that, and that's where he's at. And that's go back probably seventy-five feet, and that's where your debris is at. Okay. Right? So it it all lines up. Okay, I understand that. Then. Yeah, I mean, I thought you'd meant he was over here or something. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying that this is this is the road, the edge of the road. This is where his body's at. It's two feet. So it's a little bit more. So his body is in that close to the edge of the road, and he's he is white because he's got no blood in. I mean, he's. Obviously deceased. I think he was deceased mm -hmm. the moment he hit the car. Well, that's and so he like is that. he is lily white. Any light that hits that is gonna glow. I did not see him the night before. I'll swear on stack of Bibles. I did not see him the night before. I did not. So where were you looking when you were walking back towards Highmore to establish that you were by Highmore? Well, I, I guess I was looking, you know, that direction. I mean, to the right, I was looking to look at the green Highmore sign. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm walking right. and looking uh -huh. to try and see that sign to make sure that's the... And then I turn around and I'm looking into the ditch. So I don't know exactly where I turned around and saw him. I, I didn't see him. I did not see him. So you, it was 400 and some steps from your car towards Highmore. Okay. You had to walk by him. I, well, I might have walked by him, but I didn't see him. But you also had to walk by the light. That's the really confusing part. Again, the light's still on. And, and the it's, flashlight's it, lit up and glowing. Yeah, it's it's... It's not in the grass deep. I mean, it's on the very edge of the grass. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's like right on the edge mm -hmm. of the grass. It's there's a couple blades of grass here, but this is all. I don't know where open. I, I don't know where my steps were. I turned around. I did not see those things. I did not see those things. I did not see him until the next day. So we also walked back to Hi the Highmore sign to see how close you have to get to see it. Okay. And I have 2015 and 2020, so I have uh -huh. pretty good vision. Right, right. And you have to get, you had to go by. There was no question about it in order to read that sign. Well, I, I, I mean, from what you're telling me, I'm not disputing that I went by, but I didn't see him at all. I did not see him until the next day. And I did not know Look, about the glasses until you told me. Let's let's look at it this way. Did you see something and just didn't pay any attention? No, no. I mean, because no. I mean, I I know you're shook up. Yes. I I I I know just from talking mm -hmm. to you the, the next two days later or whenever we talked to you, mm -hmm. you were still shook up. Mm -hmm. And I can appreciate that. I well, can. And it's like, so in light of that, mm -hmm. I'm saying, did you? just maybe not pay attention when you walk by or I mean how I mean I, I was just scanning I did not see him I mean I'm scanning 
but I didn't, you know, it's not, it's a camera light. It's not great either. But if you're looking for a deer, mm -hmm. you'd be looking at the ground. You're looking at the ground, aren't you? Wouldn't you look at the ground? I looked both, you know. I kind of did, I mean, I don't know where my hand went exactly. But yeah, I did that's not impossible see. to know. Right. right. We get that. We I, get that. But I did not see him. <sighs> I did not see him. No. I did not see him. I don't know what I'll tell you. I didn't you know what, Jason? If, if I'd, I'd have an easier time believing this, he still had clothes on. Because he had... He had I he saw had him in a dark shirt. Yeah, a dark shirt. And, and, yep. and jeans. But I didn't look... We didn't look at him real close the next morning either. And, you know, when, we, when I saw him, when I found him. I found him the next morning. I did not see him that night. No. I did not. I can see how you say I should have seen him, but I didn't see him. And, and I'm just doing it I, from a, no, a I logical... No, per, I, mean, I did not see him. That's what I'm just saying. It's from a logical mm -hmm. perspective, and that's what we're, we're talking about all along here. Mm -hmm. we, we, from a logical perspective, if you went by that, I don't know. I'm looking, I, I, I would have seen that. And, and, and we asked a number of people, so when you go looking for a deer, you know, what? I, I stand into the ditch and walking back towards my car, but I did not see him. We also say, I mean, the people we talked to said, so I was in a meeting with a group of investigators, and I said, how many of you hit a deer? Every single one in that room. And there was nine. Right. I said, how many of you did not know you hit a deer? Every single one of them knew they hit a deer. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think the fallen part came. That explains that part. That kind of explains that part of it. The part of him laying on the side of the road. And but, but then the next morning, we found him at 9.30. Yeah. People had gone by, and they didn't see him either. Yeah. You know? and, and we saw that. Right. Joe and I saw that. Right. But, you, but you know what? I mean, he was, he was off the level. Mm-hmm. But as long as you were on from the, from the fog line over, you could see his body. You could see the white. But if you were, like, walking down the center ro of the road, okay. which I'm thinking if you just hit something, you're not going to walk down the middle of the road because those cars come along pretty fast, mm -hmm. and you didn't want to be a statistic either. Mm -hmm. but I don't remember any cars coming when I was there until the sheriff came. I did not see him. So nobody stopped by to see if you know, were help, doing needed okay help or anything. No, nope. I called nine one one and the sheriff came. That's the okay. only. So those are the only two that went by that I yeah I don't that you notice. I mean, when the sheriff came, you know I kind of like I said I'm looking at the car. He's on my side. I don't remember anybody going past then, but you know up to that point, nobody had come. You know nobody. But you were also on your phone too, as well, though, right? Well, I you were, I you, were call, you were calling people and saying, "I just got in a crash." On the way home. Well, that's on the way home. Yes. Okay. Okay. After I got the sheriff's no, yes, okay. that, no, I went didn't call until I until the I should have sent them text messages with the photos and hey, I got into an accident. I'm okay. Car not so good. That was during that time, right? Well, I took the photo, mm -hmm. and then the sheriff comes. I don't think I send it until I leave the sheriff. I don't think I call anyone until I'm down, going down the road again. And that's when you send the text messages to Nadvig and Borman? Then? Somewhere, yeah. Okay. And I, I mean, I, I, we just want to get, uh -huh. we want to make sure yeah. we get everything in the right order. I did not see him the night before. Absolutely not. I did not see him until I discovered him the next day and got Tim, got the sheriff. I never
never saw the glasses until you told me when we were here in this room. You know, I was looking at the insurance. That's all. I mean, you have to. Well, I you, have to give, you have to give us a little little no, something I'm here, right. Jason. Okay. Initially, you were driving down the middle of the road. We know that's not true. You were not had. You were ten and two driving, and you didn't see this guy walking down the middle of the road. We know that's not true. Jason, you're a good guy. You're not used to being in this pickle. I am a good guy, yes. I, I agree. I agree. You're not used to this. We're used to people that are used to being in that seat. Right. I understand that. I mean, I understand. So that's the why process. we we are and I know you understand the process. I'm not second guessing that at all. What I'm what I'm saying is if you if you look at it from our perspective, oh, I get okay. It. Things haven't been straightforward by any means. In fact, some people would call you a liar. I am not a liar. I some people I'm not I'm not calling you a liar. I'm saying there's some there's some mistakes made here though. You would have to agree with that. I don't know what I'd have done differently. I did not I believed I was in the road and I believe I set my phone down, shut the radio off, and was looking to put the cruise control on. And I didn't find him. I did not find him until the next day. I mean, it pains me tremendously to hear that his face went through the windshield. But I didn't look over. I was trying to stay alive myself at that point and get over. And I looked at the car, and I didn't see any blood. You know, I, I've been thinking to myself, if his face went through... It had to be blood everywhere, you know, would have been on the car. Because you got more skin in here. Than Actually, air. that's not true, because okay. I believe he was dead on impact. Right. The second you hit him, he was dead. His heart's not working anymore. He is dead. So it's not pumping anymore. It's just sitting there. Okay, well, I didn't know that. I mean, but I, that's how I was envisioning it. And, and I could I see. mean, I would think, you know, I was thinking the back of his head. And I'm trying to clarify it for you as right. well. Right. Well, that's it, because I would like obviously it. like to know what the, you know, how he rode the car and where he ended up and everything, you know, it never made sense to me, you know, and I figured it had to be the back of his head and hair then doesn't have the capillaries and everything your face has to spread blood because there's no blood that I saw in the car or even on, on the outside of the car when we looked at it. You but, know. It but it is a red car. Well, it's it. It's a red <laughs> car and, and it is dark. Yeah. You know, you know, the people have been like, oh, there was blood on the road. Well, how do you tell that it's blood on the road versus washer fluid or or it's just the road? I mean, it's dark. Yeah, and we, That's mm -hmm. super dark, and I'm not expecting to have a person walking down the road or the shoulder even at that time of night or day. Yeah. It only makes sense that it was a deer to me. The other thing that question that I brought up to this group, uh -huh. how many of you went back the next day to look to see what your now, hair looked I, like? Now, I, I got that, and I will. I didn't go back to look at him because I thought that I'd hit a man. I went back because the debris was still there. No, what, yeah, what I'm what I'm saying is, I asked them how mm -hmm. many of you went back to look at the deer, right, to find the deer, right, and none of them did. Well, they have, most of them probably found the deer or they, left the scene from there. I mean, I'm bringing it back, and if I wouldn't, you know, I thought I was doing the right thing, getting gas to give back to the sheriff. And I said, well, let's look for, you know, the deer. You know, I was just curious of how did it play out. It just felt like a thunderbolt hit my car, you know. And how did this, where did he go? Maybe he went to the other side. I didn't know. And I was kind of trying to put my mind at ease of how this happened. How did this happen? But I, I guess to my credit, you know, I'm also like, well, if I didn't find him, how long would he have laid there? You know, and I told the sheriff, and the sheriff was surprised. The sheriff's on the scene at least twice, and so is the tow truck driver. And none of them thought it was suspicious that it was not a deer. 
I guess Heidi wasn't there when the tow truck driver was there, though, so I don't know what he saw or didn't see, but he didn't yeah. jump up and down and tell the sheriff, hey. Yeah, there was a whole lot. I mean, the right. car was gone. Right. Obviously, you were gone. Tow, tow truck guy is gone. Right. But we tracked everybody. I mean, we, mm -hmm. right. we're we tracking oh, I would think so, down. yes, absolutely. We're not leaving anything uncovered. Well, I, well, I get it, though. I get strict scrutiny of, yeah. of who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this would happen no matter what. Because I think you guys would be sitting in these chairs if it was somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I think you know that. I did not see him the night before. I did not find him until the next day. So you're, you're not really sure how far you walked to see the Highmore site? No. I walked back in that easterly direction towards the sign until I could see that enough, you know, enough that I could tell the sign more. The sign. Okay. Do you remember walking by a marker, a road marker, just one of the yellow X's that they put on a, it's on a post, no. like on a white, like, no, it's just on a regular post, yeah. I guess. No. You don't remember seeing that at all? Mm -hmm. I'm looking off to that direction, to the east, to the to the right. Does that's where the signs at on that side of the road. And I don't know how far I walked to see that. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you know, without I mean that part of it I can I guess mm -hmm. I, I get. Mm -hmm. That part of it. Because I'm also looking at the town, you know, to, yeah, it's, you know, you're just putting two and two together of where am I? Yeah, where you're at. Right. So, I mean, arguably, but the flashlight on the side of the road, that's a really, I don't know. I that's going to be a hard one to stomach. I don't, I didn't see anything. I didn't see a flashlight. I didn't see a man. But you did see your debris on the road, which was one bigger chunk, I think you described it. Right, yep. Was there more than that that you saw on the road? It actually wasn't on the road, it was on the shoulder. Right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Not really. I mean, if it. Think about that. I remember seeing that chunk. So, part of the the Tim being on the other side of the road. No, no, Tim's on the same side of the road with me. I mean, so you, you turn. We and we go going that way, but you were going to go over there next. We went to Highmore first. Yep. I got gas. He parked and waited. Okay. We then uh, he, I went first, and you we turned both park. parked on the north side of the road, and that's where you guys were walking. Correct. He went east. I went west. Okay. We never made it to the south side of the road because I found you him on the north side. Going there. Correct. Right. Yes. But then it. But then we didn't need to go to the south side because I found okay. him on the north side. Yeah. So, I mean, with your car, with the damage that it has, I mean, in your car's rounded, obviously this right, is right. where. Right. Right. And so this is all the extreme. Call it the extreme right of your hood as you're sitting behind the steering wheel. It wouldn't be likely that it would go that way, would it? Anything that well, you know, hit I, on this no, side, no, it's not likely that it's going to go to the north side. No, I mean I just thought our south side, it's going to stay on the north side. Right. If it if it died, you know that it didn't hit and then go off and keep going. I didn't okay. think so. But I didn't check the south side of the road. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't get to that. I didn't get to that. Okay. I I thought, let's start on the north side because maybe he's dead and he's back farther towards the bean field or whatever that is. You know, maybe he glanced and went that way farther back out there. Uh, but maybe he, you know, did you got see? Across. Did you see the the mirror on the on the door here? Did you see that was broken? Yes. 
Okay. So everything likely went this way. Okay. And then his face is in the windshield here. I did not understand the, you know, where he went, you know, in relation, because I never saw him and the car together, you know. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Did you feel bumps? I'm not talking rumble bars. Mm -hmm. I'm talking bump up. No. Like any kind of something well, underneath I mean, your car. No. I mean, I don't, I know it went, you know, and, and I like, and I'm, I'm pumping the brakes, and that's what I'm doing. I didn't know what the shock was. Okay. I mean, so you know, what 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 the impact was. I was just literally trying to stay alive myself and get to the side yeah. of the road. So pumping changes how ABS works. Uh huh. Because ABS is designed, you just you right you power it right you push it down. You don't pump it. It's not like the old cars that okay. that I would be used to mm -hmm. back in my day. Right. It's like if you start to skid or you're trying to stop and skidding's happening, happening, you you pump the brakes. Mm -hmm. With these, you slam on the brakes. I remember hitting it and letting off, hitting it, letting off, hitting it. You know, I don't know if it was three or four times, but I okay. know I I did not just slam it. And that might make sense for how far you went ahead of. Right, because I didn't continue out. Didn't, you didn't hit the, you didn't dynamite the brakes to to stop right away, because I guess I'd always heard if you if you're you know, in an accident and you slam it, you could spin yourself or go in the ditch or roll or something yourself is what I'd always I guess I knew. I, that's why I hit hard, but not to the floor. I would guess I and then I you know I hit a couple times. Okay. And I, I guess I'm wondering if you're feeling the the bumps or even the rumble bars, because I, I thought I hit. I mean, I heard the rumble bars. Yes, once I once I started applying the brakes, okay. I don't remember any rumble bars prior to the brakes. You know, okay. yeah. So prior to stepping on the brakes, you don't remember the rumble bars at all. looking over at him, now that I know it's a him, or what it was, I was now, I guess I had, would, I would say I'd describe it as tunnel vision. I mean, I was now trying to just try to get over and stop. I did not look, I did not know it was a man until the next day. So the, the, so your initial statement where you said, I hit something because I didn't know what it was, but I'm assuming it's a deer. So assuming. I didn't know what I hit until impact. That's a quote. Okay. What does that tell you? Upon impact, I knew what I hit. Okay. Say that again, if you would. I did not know what I hit until impact. That's your quote. To me, that means once you hit it, you did know what you hit. I did not know until the next day. I did not. No. No. I would, I'm a military guy. You do not leave people in the battlefield. You do not leave people behind. If I had any thought that he was a man, I would have tried to render aid or do whatever to get an ambulance out there or whatever. You know, obviously I didn't know, you told me he died on impact, it would have been too late, but I, I would have been telling the sheriff and everything. You know, if I thought it was a man, obviously I would have insisted on a, you know, blood test or breathalyzer or something at that point, you know, immediately. But I didn't have any idea that this was, you know, anything more than an accident. But you're pretty shook up. Well, absolutely. So, I mean, it just the... Right. Everything caused you to be pretty shook up at that point. So that's where that's where sometimes people make errors. Mm -hmm. They make mistakes. Right. Like I said, from early on, people make mistakes. That's why I have a job. That's why Joe has a job. We try to fix those. 
Mm -hmm. I, I did not know it was a man until I found him the next day. No. I would not have left anybody. I didn't even, I had not even fathomed that a man would be there in the dark. I would say that, you know, it's logical that a deer would be there, not a man. Right. right. And it, quite honestly, I was, I was the tough dummy. Oh, God. I was the guy walking down the side that they drove by, and I was wearing a blue shirt just like that guy, blue jeans. I volunteered because... And carrying his flashlight. And carrying the dead guy's flashlight mm -hmm. to see what they would see. They videoed it. It's pretty apparent. It was pretty apparent that you were not looking at the road when that happened. Whether it's... I still believe I'm looking at the radio and then looking at the speedometer to lock in the crews is the best that I can remember. Do you just hit resume or do you hit... Do you actually lock it in every single time? I do both. Uh, you know, it depends on if it catches or not, the resume, because sometimes it won't. It won't. Like if you, you take it off, you hit the brake and it comes down, it sometimes won't lock it back in. You have to hit, sometimes you have to put it in to hit resume. You know, or I mean to so it's on. It's like hurting or catch or something right, yeah, like that. Right, it'll, it'll come off of and you gotta do it over again, basically. And that's what I'm looking at. I know it, and I, I know how some of this looks, but I did not see a man until the next day. Absolutely. And then when you told me the, fo the uh, glasses, you know, obviously that made me think, you know, are they his, you know, after I left here? But I didn't know, you know. Yeah. But I did not see I mean, I, my, my, like I said, I looked at the 65 sign, I looked at the 48 miles to pier, and I didn't even really think I was getting going yet. I mean, and, you know, away you go, and I just got hit by a thunderbolt. That's how, that stuff happens so fast, though, Jason, and, and we know it. Because, I mean, quite frankly, it's not the first time that this has ever happened. Well, yeah. But it's like, we know that, you look down, and we know you're on your phone at some point. We know you're put you're you're telling us you're putting it down. Absolutely. Turning off the radio. Yes. All those things. Yes, because I'm getting rid of distractions, not adding to them or having distractions. Mm -hmm. the stuff well, you told me that you had a search warrant for my car. Yeah. You know, yes. Yes. For example. I mean, standard. Mm -hmm. and so. will show a lot of stuff so if you were texting we'll show it I was not texting I mean it, I mean if you should be able to look at my phone and show it if I wasn't you're, texting if you're answering emails uh -huh. we'll show it right and so if any of that was going on let's take care of it now so we don't have to come back and re reinvent this thing Jason and the best I can remember I put it down hit the radio looked at the speedometer I don't remember sending any texts, you know, and prior to the crash and the picture and sure, you know, sure, and I, which I willingly gave and everything. I mean, and that's my fault to say text. Yep, yep. Any kind of right e transmission, right? Whatever it is, right? And it's like, uh, let's get it all taken care of mm -hmm. now. Because do I look at that stuff? Yes, but I looked at it and I know I put my phone down because I'm I'm gonna think about this case. And I'm getting rid of distractions, not adding to them. My question would be, is why would you go into that um, Joe Biden article just to then set your phone down? I mean, if you're that's, that's what I do. I guess I just see the headlines and stuff. I do that all the time. You know, I look at it, maybe, you know, like a scroll, and if it's a long one, I don't, you know. Never read it. I mean, I think I could do that when I'm sitting here. I'm like, if they're too long, eh, next. And you go to the next one. Or go to not doing that anymore. So that one's a fairly, I mean, as as it goes. Right. I mean, you look at it. it it's not of interest. For sure. Right. 
I do not. I never read the article. I might have, you know, scan, you know, scanned it and looked at it, but. So where do we go from here? How long till? Well, we're still we're still gathering stuff. From, mm -hmm. I mean, we wanted to get you up to speed. Mm -hmm. We wanted to. This is your opportunity to straighten things out. Right. Well, I want to help straighten stuff out. It Absolutely. So that's why we're you know we came in and you know we're we're quite honestly mm -hmm. you know I told you my concerns mm -hmm. and whether you think they're bogus or not. No, oh, I think you're very genuine. But it's it's, it's going to be a hard thing to get past. That's right. What, so if, if there's I never there, saw there was a man. If there was a logical reason outside of that, I just I we just need to know. We need to know. Let's get this thing behind us. I thought I was in the road. I you know, I never saw him. I never saw him. Until the next day when I found him. I don't know what else I can help try and straighten out for you. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to? I'm obviously not as observant as I should be. Uh, should we take a couple minute break? And yeah. Yeah. Can I get some water? We'll, we'll get you a glass of water. We'll take a couple minute break. We've been talking a long time. Jason, um, you know, trying to figure out what our other options are to help you out with this too, you know. Um, so, if you were to take a polygraph on this, how would you do? I would pass, except for I, that I've asked my guys how that would work, because I thought of, can I take a polygraph? And I'm a polygraph examiner okay. myself. And so. Well, they told me the only concern would be, now you know it versus you didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. And I I believe what I believe, you know, that I did not see him or anything else, but then they said, well, now you know that it was a man, even though at the time you didn't. Right. And it could fluctuate. But mm -hmm. I believe, and I will 
you know, if that's what I got to do, you know, mm -hmm. I believe with all my heart. I did not know what it was. I thought it and assumed it was a deer, and uh, I never, I didn't know it was him until I saw him the next day. Mm -hmm. Who'd you talk to about it? Uh, well, uh, I think I talked to Tim, and then Tim asked the DCI folks. Oh, okay. Like, uh, Tyler is our guy, uh -huh. he's the agent here. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think he's the one that went out and secured the scene right away and such. He's our agent here and yep. here. Mm -hmm. I think he gives polygraphs. We can obviously get polygraphs just like yeah, the folks probably sure. do when, yeah. you, yeah. when you hire new agents and such. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know, I've never taken a polygraph yeah. or anything. I was curious because I'm very familiar with most of your examiners. Yep. Um, you know, I mean, I, so think, I, I think it was more of curiosity. I think Tim anything. talked to Tyler. His okay. Dude, yep. who talked to. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe. You know, I believe I, you know, I didn't, I thought I hit a deer. You know, I didn't know what I hit, but I thought I hit a deer because that's the only thing that made sense. Why, why would you think a man is walking down the side of a road in dark? Right. Did you talk to anybody else about any aspects of investigation? I guess. Like crime scene investigators? No. Uh, you said you mentioned it to Tim about that. Right. How about phone forensics, any of that kind of stuff? Well, I asked your guy a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, Cassidy, yep. you know, how mm -hmm. it would work. And then he was explaining, because, of course, uh, you know, how it is a transmit and such. And I told him about that on my way app mm -hmm. on that sure. phone because yep. it tracks if you use it then you don't get the points and such but I didn't want it to be transmitting mm -hmm. and then that be held against me or how it slams into the uh, you know into the wheel well and such mm -hmm. so you talked to Cassidy about that yeah well I, I told him about that I guess and he oh, said okay he says I, and it doesn't like it we put it on airplane mode and it doesn't like that no, well, it was for traveling. It's yeah. It didn't. It didn't like the. You know, it kept beeping at them. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Anybody else? Did you talk to anybody else about? Can't think of anybody. Go on. Because you guys have your own unit, don't you? Like for cyber crime or phone oh, yeah. Yeah. crap like that. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, Yep. I didn't know if you guys did nope. or if that's we something do. that you guys have yep. done people. I guess I did much. ask Gromer a few questions, just how phones work and how they transmit and such. And who's Gromer? He's the head of my ICAC unit. Oh, okay. Out of Rapid City. He was there one day, and I just asked him, well, how does how do things work? How, how fast do they transmit? What will get held against me? I explained this on my way app again, mm -hmm. you know, and such. Mm -hmm. okay. And he's out of Rapid City? Yeah, he, he's headquartered out of Rapid City. Okay. So he's like your coordinator for your whole ICAC yeah, DCI? He's the, of, he's the boss of the ICAC division okay. of DCI, yes. Okay. So if we arranged for a polygraph, you'd be willing to take one? Yes. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Okay, we have, I mean, um, your guys, obviously, right. we can't, can't do that. Right. And our guys have to do theirs in North Dakota, just like your guys have to do them in South Dakota, because they're licensed there. There's licensing issues. I, I guess I, if you're asking, I'll let you ask first. If you're asking if I'll go to North Dakota, hell yes, I'll go. You know, I mean, if that's what it takes or whatever. I know I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, we we're, were just actually we were just brainstorming how we could do this, and, mm -hmm. it, and it's like, well, right, we mm -hmm. could have them come to Bismarck, and one of our guys there could do it. I'm yeah. willing. I'm willing to do that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever I can do to cooperate. And and like I said, I mean, from the beginning, you've been cooperative. Uh, well, so again, like I, the hardest part of this is I wouldn't do anything different. I didn't know that this was going to happen to me, obviously. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, why would a man be walking down the road? I believe I'm on the road, and wham, and my life changes. I never 
I called 911. I got the sheriff out there. You know, I mm -hmm. thought I was doing the right things. Obviously, I didn't see everything that I should have seen, probably, or not, but I did not see him until the next day. Well, quite frankly, we're going to continue on. Okay. We're going to keep doing our stuff. Like I'm saying, we, we got. Like, yeah. We, we've been spending. Well, a lot of time. A I lot assume. of time. And, and that's because we want to do a thorough job. We don't well, want understand. anything. How about, uh, so do you have any, you know, obviously now we got to set this up and such to go up there and everything, but how, do you have any kind of time estimates before you do your report? And then where does your report go? To that county. Good. <laughs> I mean, well, that's the first night I was dead. The governor did a press conference and said I was involved in a one-car fatality and my whole family thought I was dead. Sure. You know, and I would like, obviously, a chance to know what's happening, <laughs> you know, before it's on all the media. And, and you know, we don't control. I understand, but I didn't know you were sending it right to the governor, you know, first. We didn't. No, no, no. The, that you were going to send the report when, well, it, when it comes no. or what? No, we're not sending send it to the, the county. The, we're not sending it to the governor. We I, I'm the case. So I have okay. my reports yes. set up to go to the Highway Patrol uh -huh. because they're technically the lead on this, so okay. they need a cop. And the Hyde County State's Attorney. That's it. Okay. So actually, honestly, for a very high-profile case, I have a very short distribution list <laughs> on this because it's as many other people would like to get the reports. There's no, oh, I mean, the, there's there's well, no reason. The governor says she's going to put them out all when they come. Right. Yeah, sorry. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I know. We, no, I just train train that we're not going right. to stop. I mean, I'm not going to stop. We can you tell me like is my toxicology back? Or anything? Can you tell me any of that? I'll tell you it's zero. Right. Just well, like you be. knew. Yeah, absolutely. Just like you knew. That. But it's and we followed up like with the folks that you and I don't know mm -hmm. if they called you or not. And I don't care if they mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. because I talked to the waitress and mm -hmm. I talked to the bar owner. Okay. I talked to those people and I knew what it was going to be. But right. we had well, to do, do your due diligence. Absolutely. And the HP that came there was because I told. Them. Okay. Okay. I told them. I said just go do it. Mm -hmm. I you know I didn't know you from Adam. I said. Maybe, maybe not. Right. But either way, we need to do this right. because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so they're the, they did it on my be bequest. Okay. Because at that time, I already knew that I was the one coming down here. And so we're just going to... I wanted to make sure... I mean, if you were or if you weren't... Absolutely. It was going to... Right. You know, granted, it's a little late, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's better than nothing. If right. we didn't chat and do it, right. then public perception would have been that you were completely annihilated out there driving. Well, that's you know, what I mean, he said anyway. Yeah. But I did not have any alcohol. How about, can you tell me if his toxicology's come back? We don't have any of that yet. Okay. They said that might be a while. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have that yet. And that's out of our hands because that went to Ramsey County, Minnesota. Right, right. So, and how about the accident reconstructionist expert out of Wyoming? Well, they they have the three guys working that are construction guys here, reconstruction guys here, and then they're working in conjunction with him. So that's that's still in the, that's it's all new. Mm -hmm. It's this has been labor intensive oh, quite bet. honestly absolutely and we're i mean we're honestly trying to get everything covered and we got there. calls of you know from north dakota taxpayers of why we were paying for to do a south dakota investigation and you know we know we've done ones for you folks i mean last year yeah. there was an auditor issue we investigated oh, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know it goes back and forth right and now the general public doesn't know it but how else do you maintain the integrity mm -hmm. Amen. So we just do it, and generally it's not advertised as widely as this is, but I think they wanted to make sure that it wasn't, I mean, as one of the cousins said, another big cover-up. Right. Oh, like, well, he's, yes, I won't say anything. Yeah, so that's that. Any other questions? I have nothing. I don't have anything I, at again, this point, Jason. I, I appreciate you coming in. Just um, thank you for all your cooperation. Yeah. We do appreciate it. We hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it is what it is. And we, we look at 
what we're doing and what we're seeing as evidence. I that's the best we can do. I did not know it was a man until the next day. I'll go to my grave saying that, and I'll happily take a polygraph. So. Okay. All righty. Well, we'll all right. We'll work on that angle, and uh, I mean, we have the prosecutor in the loop too. Okay. So we'll just keep going forward and and uh, see what we find out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Walk you out.